Good afternoon, Trilogy. I'm Chef Ben. We're here for a great holiday demonstration for you today. Um, what I wanted to do is something that I like very much, and I know most people will do too at uh, Christmas time and the holidays. It's something that's very easy to make. You can do it with uh, family, friends, uh, especially when the grandkids come in. Minimal ingredients, a lot of this stuff you have at home, you might have to grab a few things at the store, but they're all relatively easy and all things that you can find really simple. Um, so this is a very simple, basic, uh, more of a newer style fudge, not the old with a uh, cocoa powder kind, but uh, this is a great base. You can make all kinds of uh, different things with it, and I'll kind of go through that when we start going. So to get things started, just want to get yourself like a medium, medium uh, large saucepan, depending on what size of saucepan you're doing. Um, you're going to take two thirds of a cup of evaporated milk, I wrote on the recipe you can use sweet and condensed milk. It's kind of a, one of those things that's up to you on how sweet you want it. You put that sweet and condensed milk in. Um, if you've ever used it versus evaporated milk, you'll know that it's a lot thicker and uh, stuff like that. So it just really depends on how much sweetness you want in it. The sweet and condensed with the sugar and all this, this is, trust me, plenty of sugar in it. You don't really need to go that route, but some people like it. So you're gonna take a quarter cup of butter and we're gonna put that in with the evaporated milk. So I'm just gonna take this and uh, get it started over medium high heat. You're just gonna wanna pay attention to it. Next, what we're gonna do is, is get yourself a seven ounce container of marshmallow cream. If you don't use marshmallow cream, I wanna say it's 24, 18 to 24 regular size marshmallows, not extra large, but regular size marshmallows, not the little guys, but the regular ones. And it will kind of equal about this amount for this recipe. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but this kind of like gives it that uh, creaminess and uh, softness to your fudge. This isn't going to be a, like I said, that traditional cakey, crusty kind, um, which like I said, is like, you know, the old world style where you're making it with uh, cocoa powder. So we're going to be using chocolate chips for this today. So you just want to kind of make sure you get most of this, uh, all this marshmallow fluff out of here. I know it's kind of hard. Just use a spatula, should come out rather easy. Scrape it off. And we're just gonna keep mixing this up. He says the marshmallow fluff will take a second to come down, but once it starts, you know, I don't know, getting about 110 degrees, it should easily fall apart for you. So what we're gonna do next is, is we're gonna take a cup and a half of white sugar. Put that all in there and a quarter teaspoon of salt. You can use uh, kosher or iodized, <clears throat> it'll work either way. So just keep stirring this up. You really want to get inside the corners of your pan, because if you don't, um, like I said, there's a lot of sugar in here and it'll start caramelizing and burning to your pan. You don't really want that. So let's give it a little scrape. So the key of this is, is basically it's a few things. You just put all this stuff in a pot, bring it up to a semi-boil for a second or two. It takes about four or five minutes. <clears throat> then after that, we're just going to kill the heat. And we're going to mix it with this chocolate, vanilla, and uh, refrigerate it. And you're pretty much done. <clears throat> like I said, it's a great, easy base recipe. And that's kind of why I wanted to share this with you guys. Because you can do pretty much anything with this. You can make any kinds of fudges you'd like except obviously vanilla. You could, uh, basically, if you want to make a white fudge, you can sub out these, this amount of chocolate right here for white chocolate, and you'll pretty much have the same, you'll just have white fudge. So if you want to do that, you want to do a swirl fudge, you can do that half and half. There's all kinds of things you can do with this recipe. One of the main things um, I tell people is, is you know, use your flavors. Uh, I threw a couple derivatives on the recipe that will be attached with this. Uh, I did a Kahlua one, which is basically you just add in like a tablespoon or so of Kahlua and then you kind of have that coffee flavor and that's a uh, really good. You can use espresso extract, you could use uh, Frangelica if you have that at home, that uh, liqueur, and you could have hazelnut, you know. Like it says, any extract will go great in these. Just don't get too carried away because extracts are very strong, but I mean you can, you can put dried fruits in your fudge anything you want, any kinds of nuts. That's why I kind of left, left it open-ended on the, the nuts for this recipe because everybody likes different things. I like walnuts and pecans. Today for this fudge, I'll be using pecans. So like I said, you'll see that this comes down, it's really smooth. Like I said, you just really want to break, break up all that butter 
and all that marshmallow cream. Or if you're using little gaps or the regular marshmallows, break those down. So I'm just gonna let this go. Give it a scrape here. Like I said, you really want to make sure that it's just not burning and scorching to everything. Alright. So we're just gonna kinda of let it do its thing for a second. So you got two cups of milk chocolate and you got one cup of semi-sweet. You can change these however you like. Some people like uh, really rich dark chocolate, me preferably. Um, for my fudge, I just kind of like this mixture. It kind of, it's well balanced. Um, like I said, you can go stronger, you can do whatever you'd like. It's all on you, but this right here, this is gonna be a perfect recipe for you. So I would make this first and uh, then go from there. Like I said, you'll notice when this is cooking and it starts coming up, uh, all the sugar in here and the marshmallow cream will start to caramelize like it does like a marshmallow uh, over a fire. You know how it gets that golden color to it? Um, you'll see that throughout the, on the sides and that's why I was trying to tell you, it's like you really gotta kinda keep on it. Like I said, it doesn't really matter if it discolors a little bit, that's okay. Like it says, we're gonna pour a bunch of chocolate, vanilla and stuff in it so it'll be fine. Like I said, you're just, you don't want that burnt taste in there, that's, you know. We're making fudge. You want it to be really good, so when you hand it out, or you know, people come over and eat it, they can say you got the best fudge around, right? All right. So I'm just gonna give this another second because we just, you really want this to be hot enough to where your chocolate will melt very easy. We're only using three cups, so it shouldn't it shouldn't it should go down really uh, easily. Just remember, if you do use a uh, dark chocolate, dark chocolate melts slower, has less. Uh, milk solids in it, so it will take longer to melt. So make sure your cream is extremely hot. All right, it's getting boily on the outside here, so I'm just gonna give it another second. It'll start to thicken on you. So, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, we're good to go. I'm just gonna put this right here, and I'm going to Actually, I'll just do it right here for you. We got one cup of the semi-sweet. I, I just use Nestle, it's a quality uh, chocolate chip. And uh, two cups of milk chocolate chip. Like I said, these will break down very easy as you see. Or I'll show you, I should say. But as you can tell, this, this recipe is, is beyond easy. I can't repeat that enough. People that are scared of cooking, this is your recipe right here. Uh, just, just when you're stirring it, you know, just be very careful not to shoot anything all over you here. Like I said, this is, when you're mixing in uh, cream to chocolate, it will uh, not mix in and fold in right away. So that stuff on the top can easily jump back out and get you and it will be hot. Like I said, that marshmallow cream will uh, be very sticky on your skin, so we don't want that. So, as you can see, it's coming down. It almost looks like a brownie mix. I guess this would be the best way to kind of do it, or a really loose chocolate, or a really thick chocolate sauce. All right, so I'm gonna give this a scrape here, just to make sure everything's incorporated well. So we don't want any uh, leftover pieces of anything. All right, easy enough. So, we have that done. We're gonna take one and a quarter teaspoons of vanilla. You can use extract. I'm using paste. Uh, I always recommend to people, if you can use whole vanilla beans, get them. They're rather expensive right now, but uh, if not, if you can find vanilla paste anywhere, get it, it'll uh, make all your recipes a lot better. We try to use that here and everything just because it, it gives, it a, gives you a superior product in the long run. So that's that. <clears throat> so next all we gotta do is, is fold in two thirds cup of nuts. You can add in less, you can add in more. Um, when we get into the other one here, the one I just did a little while ago, you'll be able to see how many nuts are in it. So you'll kind of be able to judge um, when you make this recipe, how much you want to add to it. So this is two thirds cup. Just gonna whisk that in there. <clears throat> Mm. And um, this is one of those things you don't want to uh, <clears throat> mix everything together and set it down and walk away. Because once this starts, starts to cool down a little bit, it's going to congeal rather fast. 
and if you come back, you're gonna have to heat it back up and there might be a chance that it could break. It probably won't if you stir it and pay attention to it, but it could happen. So, easy enough. So, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, is you're gonna get a, a pan, eight by eight, preferably. You're gonna, or you can do it any size you want depending on you know what you wanna do. Uh, you can use glass. If you use glass, just kind of uh, lubricate it, grease it a little bit. You can use aluminum foil, or you can just use something plain. If you use it plain, it's probably gonna stick a little bit. I do like to take mine and spray them a little bit, just a tiny bit, just to uh, make sure there's no sticking in the end. You don't have to do that. You can use wax paper for this if you'd like. Just remember, uh, wax paper is microwave safe, but it is not oven safe. So, uh, but we're not using it for the oven, so. But it will uh, definitely keep your fudge nice and fresh. After I make fudge, I always uh, wrap it in wax paper and then in plastic wrap, or put it in wax paper and then put it in a plastic Tupperware container. So, easy enough. We have this made, that was what, maybe five, eight minutes. So what I'm gonna do too is, is there's all kinds of derivatives, like uh, one of the recipe I did is a chocolate turtle one. So basically what you can do is go to the store, get yourself some caramel, mix that down with a little bit of the le uh, extra evaporated milk you'll have left from the can. And uh, you can take, pour in a half of this, pour in those melted caramel, some pecans, top it with the rest of the fudge, a little more caramel, a little more pecans on the top, you now have turtle fudge. So there's so many things that you can do. Uh, it's kind of unlimited. Uh, I'm gonna throw a little bit on the top here, just why not? Let's give it a, a little extra texture. And we'll do, this is some uh, rich 80% or just 72% I believe, dark chocolate, some calva, just for some extra flavor. And I'll pat that down nicely, just so that it kind of sinks into the fudge. And I'll show you what this is going to look like now. So, when you put that in the fridge, you're going to want to leave it in there for two hours. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going in the freezer. You can to try and speed up the process, but just uh, two hours isn't that long. Just Like I said, this doesn't take that long. Just plan a little bit ahead. Two hours and you'll have uh, good to go fudge, I promise. So, what I like to do with this foil is, is uh, just unwrap it. And I mean, you can cut in here, but then you're gonna take the chance of, like I said, cutting your pan, uh, cutting the foil, maybe getting some in there, which you can pick off, but it's probably gonna uh, make it a little messy. So, what I'm gonna do now is just peel this back. Like I said, this is two hours, really, really easy stuff. But now we get ourselves a big old chunk of fudge. And it's good fudge too, I promise. So, here it says, a couple pieces here. I did spray this before so you can kind of see that, you know, it's still stuck a little bit even with it. But uh, just take your fudge now. You can trim it up. Uh, you know, if it's homemade fudge though, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we'll uh, trim it up a little bit here and get you some perfect pieces. But I want to kind of show you what the fudge is going to look like. It's a, it's a good stuff, you know, it's, this is the kind of the nut qu like quantity you're going to have in it. So like I said, if you want more, you can do that. If you want less, that's up to you. So I'm just gonna trim this guy up real quick to get us some nice pieces to show you. But I just wanted to give you guys a nice holiday recipe that's fast, easy, that pretty much everybody who comes over is gonna enjoy. And uh, it's pretty easy. When you are cutting fudge, I do recommend using a wet towel or um, have some hot water, dip your knife in it, and then dry it off. That way it'll cut through evenly and smooth. Do some nice sized pieces here. All right. I'm gonna just put these on a little plate for you just to kind of show you. But uh, you can kind of see here how dense this is and how tough it is. You'd think with the marshmallows that it would just be falling apart, but that's not what happens. It just gives it a different kind of a creaminess and dexterity to it, and it really uh, it really goes a long way. It's really smooth, really good. So let's finish this off. Some more uh, pecan pieces. Love pecans. And a little more chocolate. 
you can do, like I said, anything you want with these, but it is, uh, like I said, uh, after all fuzz, so you don't really need to garnish it much. It's more of a snack, more of something, like I said, you could take this piece, chop it up, wrap it in uh, your wax paper, put it in something plastic. That's how I prefer to do it. Um, you don't want to wrap it with too much plastic wrap because that might start getting sticky, especially if it gets warm. I tell people try and keep it chilled if you can. But uh, otherwise, simple, easy holiday fudge. Takes no time at all. Two hours uh, refrigeration time, maybe 10 minutes cooking time to get everything together. Uh, I hope you guys make this and uh, share it with your loved ones. Um, from me, the Lifestyles team, and everybody here at Brewstar, have a great day and uh, happy holidays.